everyone so this is going to be a just a quick overview of how we did the uh, aged paint and peeling paint uh, visuals on our Boba Fett armor so this is what we ended up with in the final product here and as you can see it's got the nice metallic uh, bottom finish to look like metal or the Beskar with the paint peeling effect on top. And to do that, essentially what we did here was, um, so we started with several different layers and we're gonna kind of go backward through this, um, starting with the final coat. So the final paint that we used for the armor was the uh, Montana Black. And this is the Storm paint. And these are all spray cans that we used for this, so there was nothing airbrushed on for this version. So here you can see that we have the Montana Black Storm painted over the top here. Um, and this is the top final coat. And then I'm gonna peel off this uh, masking layer. And the layer underneath this is actually the VHT Wrinkle Plus automotive paint. And that's what we use to give it the texture. So you can kind of see here that it has a bit of texture in the areas that we wanted to leave. And then you can also see where we masked off the bottom layers here using this, uh, which is the watercolor masking fluid uh, for Windsor and Newton. And it's colorless. It's kind of hard to see once it dries. They do have a colored version, which I would recommend getting um, if you have that. And basically this is kind of like a latex masking fluid. Um, it's liquid, but it dries very fast. So you have to work quickly with it. So what we did here is we painted on uh, certain areas with the masking fluid where we wanted to actually still keep that silver showing through to make it look like the paint was scratched off. Um, and then let's see if we peel this layer off here. Uh, so this is where we didn't paint the Montana black, uh, but we just had the VHT uh, wrinkle plus going on here. And you can see how it created that nice texture. Um, and then below that, we peel off the next one. Uh, this was the original just clear coat with nothing else really going on there. It's kind of peeling up the masking fluid, uh, but you can see how this was a clear coat covering over the shiny portion. Um, for the silver portion here, um, we used the clear coat on top of that. It kind of created these markings because we didn't let it dry officially. So that's another reason to let your paint always dry well. Um, the clear coat kind of brought the silver up and created these uh, transparent portions where you can see the black clear coat underneath. But we use this super silver here from Design Master, which goes on nice and even and creates a very solid silver surface. And then under that one, um, so this is going backward again in reverse order. Kind of less some residue, but you can see the clear coat. Uh, so this is just the super silver, and then we did the clear coat on top. Some of it kind of came through and left residue there. But you can see where just the super silver is and how that's a nice reflective even surface. Under the super silver, we used Krylon Fusion uh, Black and the tape did leave a residue here, um, but that should be all even if you let it dry fully. And that's the Krylon Fusion there, just a gloss black. Uh, what that does is it puts down a nice, even reflective layer to go under your silver. And below that, if we peel off the final masking layer here, you can see that we're actually just painting on just some standard palette 
or extruded PVC. So this is unmodified, unpainted, just the raw PVC palette. We didn't sand this or anything. We just went and did the gloss black on that. And then we did that super silver on top. We did one clear coat. We did the VHT wrinkle plus. And then on top of that, we put our masking fluid down. Uh, we actually did our masking fluid under the VHT because you want to put your masking fluid on your silver surface because you want the silver to show through. The hardest part is remembering that you want to actually mask off what you want to show. So you have to pick your areas which are really uh, nice and clear for the silver there. And then once you have that, you put down your VHT over your masking fluid. And once your VHT dries and you can see it wrinkles and gets that nice texture, and then you can put down your final color on top of that. So what that gives you is a final piece that you can then go back and peel off your masking fluid. And if you start to peel it off, you can kind of see here, it comes off pretty easily. Um, it helps to use a rubber glove sometimes if you want. It'll come up a little bit easier, but we'll go ahead and kind of go over here to where we have the final paint. And if we start just kind of peeling this up and see how we rub it up, and we have the silver below, which is showing, and that's what we want to show because that's the original color, the bottom color there. And the VHT gives it a little bit of depth so you don't just have an even flat layer and it looks like the paint is kind of peeling up. So we're gonna go ahead, go through and kind of peel up the remainder of this. See how it's showing there. And if we peel up over here, we did go ahead and put that under the VHT and you can see how it goes under that. But where we really want to see it is under the color here. So you can see we can go through. And if you put this on thick enough, you can actually peel off pretty big pieces and it's a lot easier to remove. You can see where we still have some more masked off here. Go ahead and peel that back. Again, if you put it on thinner, it's easier to remove with a rubber glove. If it goes on thicker, then you can take it off kind of with just your fingers and you want to rub it off, allowing the other paint to remain. And so this gives you a good idea of how it looks once you've gone through and then peeled off that masking layer and it shows through to the actual silver, the super silver here uh, that we left. So that's really the easiest way to get that peeling paint look. Uh, it makes it look like it's nice and worn and damaged. And you can go through, and really the key thing is applying this masking layer. You wanna make sure that you apply it uh, in the correct pattern. So you make it look like it's actually paint that's peeling off and worn, because if you apply it incorrectly, what you'll get is just what looks like splotches of uh, paint or paintbrush strokes. And you wanna make sure that you don't get paintbrush strokes. So just make sure that you take your time applying it. When you put it down, it actually dries pretty fast. You can actually kind of stretch it and get these nice streaks here. So see how that goes to a fine point. It looks nice and worn to a fine point. You can't tell that's a brush stroke, even though we did apply this with a brush. And that's what'll give you those great looks. And they'll kind of come out like paint peeling. Also, make sure you get around the edges because the edges of your uh, object are gonna have more wear. So it's important to make that look worn with your masking fluid. And you can kind of come back in and see how we've got the paint showing through there on all the corners. We go to peel up the rest of this here. And you can see how it's nice and splotchy. It looks like it's very worn. So this was all painted uh, within 24 hours. It's advisable to let each layer dry a little bit more before you start peeling everything off because then your clear coat won't do that. And you'll have a nice solid clear coat over the top of your silver, which is what you want because when you go back to peel things off, you wanna have that nice silver underneath to make it look like it's a solid surface. But that's uh, pretty simple. And again, this was just using spray paint and then also the Colorless Art Masking Fluid uh, they do have a version with a pigment, which I would recommend using so you can tell where you applied it when you're applying it. So that would be at this point here once you've got your clear coat on and then you're gonna paint over it with your masking areas. And then you can go and do the VHT Wrinkle Plus, which is right here. Let that dry, they say 24 to 48 hours. Uh, this was under 24 hours. 
but you can see that it's very dry and on this surface it's really not a problem. This is one layer. They say to apply more if you want to make sure that it's dried, uh, but you can see kind of how good that looks and gives it that nice texture in the paint versus just having a flat uh, matte paint from the paint. So I hope this helps everyone else who's trying to figure out how to uh, paint some weathered armor. Um, and then what you can do after this is you can go back over with another darker wash, kind of add some more depth to it, make it look a little dirtier and a little more worn.